Hey everybody, welcome back. Time once again for viewer mail or viewer hate mail or hate comments as the case may be. This is when we look through the comments section on the various videos that have been put up and select a handful of negative or foolish comments and pick them apart for the sake of argument. And before you question, no, it doesn't bother me because that's something that someone always seems to say. Don't let it get to you. I, I could care less. They can comment all they want. It doesn't make a difference to me. But since they made a comment, we may as well do something with it. And this particular segment has become very popular with people on this channel. And as I always say, people may not have much sense, but they sure have two cents whether you need change or not. And they're always trying to read between the lines, but they're in the wrong damn book. So we'll go ahead and get started here. There's a lot of material to run through. First off, on a video I did on Prepper University talking about body armor and that if you have body armor, it might be a good idea to try doing some training in it so that you can get comfortable with it. And this person says, train and work out with your armor. Seriously, don't. Just put it away and just plan on putting it on when SHTF or shit hits the fan. Yeah, don't experience wearing your body armor. What a great idea. It's heavy, it's hot, it's cumbersome, it restricts movement. If you've never worn it and you put it on in an emergency situation like SHTF, you're in for a very rude awakening. And it's better to have a good idea, in my opinion, of what that experience is gonna feel like before you get to that point, not in the heat of the moment, trial by fire. question and this was a short and this had to do with having a BLM appreciation day at a nursing home and it's on the calendar there and I took a short and I asked hey guys do you think this is appropriate and this guy says yes it is bra why not why not well because it's very political and if it's a state-run facility I don't think anything state-run should have social politics forced on the people that are involved with it, public school, the library, anything like that. That's my personal opinion. And I asked an opinion, and this guy got upset. You're asking me why not? Why don't you tell me why they should do it? Another one for Bud Light, and that's an old short. The real reason Bud Light is offering a $15 rebate. I gave an opinion on that in a short real quick and this guy says stupid orange clown lover your stupid Americans that's the wrong use of the word your by the way your stupid Americans are still buying it idiots even you stupid rocker is buying it after shooting it down you people are idiots what rocker am I the stupid rocker what is he talking about and also I love how Obviously, Orange Clown Lover is a dig on Donald Trump. People just can't resist. And I've heard the term referred to as Trump derangement syndrome, where people are so obsessed with disliking Donald Trump that they will lash out at every opportunity, whether you're talking about him or not. And he was not mentioned in this at all. Nothing alludes to Donald Trump in that short. I'm giving an opinion on why it is that at that time there was tons of Bud Light piled up in the aisles at the supermarket and this guy just has to attack Donald Trump, Americans, and some rocker. The trash pile short and I did this in South Carolina deep deep in the sticks and this is a little bonfire going trash bonfire I say it's not exactly trash but I'll explain in a minute and these people had a problem with it actually a lot of people had problems with it and I look at comments like these and it occurs to me how much people they've got to say something but they have apparently no real-world experience whatsoever and this guy says who burns their trash question mark I'll burn cardboard and stuff if I've got a ton of it but this is just dumb and the other person says guess what you're killing our planet that person might have been being sarcastic but this first one who burns their trash I'll burn cardboard it's just dumb dumb to burn trash who burns their trash let's think about this first of all that particular trash pile 
actually happens to be a lot of fabric, bed sheets, clothing, and a few pieces of wooden furniture that were contaminated with mold. When the hazmat team that you have to pay thousands for comes to your house to remove anything with mold on it, what do you think they're going to do with it? <laughs> Just let that sink in. What do you think they're going to do with it? What do you think happens to that trash? How about this? What do you think the military does with their trash? What do you think most countries do with their trash that can't afford to bury it somewhere? That can't afford to bury it somewhere. Also, what do you think people do when they have no trash service? You'd probably have to drive for like four hours from there to even get to a neighborhood that has trash a service available where dump trucks are going to come pick it up. And in rural areas like that where there is trash service, what do you think they do with it? Because they don't have a designated dump. They don't have the convenience of being like a lot of these liberal states, if you will, and I'm going to attack them. Being in Georgia, there are uh, official dump sites here that are designated for other states. That is, i.e., for example, New Jersey or New York fills up boxcars with trash, carts them out here, and then they truck it to dump sites that were purchased by these other states deep in the, in the sticks in Georgia. And I did a video uh, about this next to one of these sites, one of these trash mounds, because there's a little pond there that was completely contaminated. It smelled like raw sewage. It was destroyed because the rubber barrier they put around the base of it, it's not enough to contain that. It really isn't. Let's move on here. It says, I know it's a short and I want to give you the benefit of the doubt, but aside from what you might have put in that fire, You've got no protection for the fire, no stones, no little trench, just right in on any patch of ground. You're the kind of person that those dumb rules you don't want to follow exist because. Because of, I guess he means to say. And this person comments underneath, it says, it looks like it recently rained. Uh, don't follow the rules. Um, and I'll tell you, you know, those people out there, obviously, they've been burning trash this way forever. They've never had a problem, and that ground is saturated, and even if it wasn't, there were people standing by watching it, because that's what they do. And a few more here, selfish, ignorant, wannabe, shit-kicking moron, uh, people like you shouldn't reproduce. Why? Because I burned garbage. And again, it's not exactly garbage there, even though I called it a trash bonfire. <laughs> and this guy says, I'm still scum. Okay, I'm scum. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Because I burned trash. Nice. Moving on, and this is kind of connected with it. Huge TV dumped at the lake. And that's a short I did, like, what, a year ago? And this person found it. It says, you're complaining about this, but there is a video of you burning your garbage. And I actually commented on this one. It says, burning wood and cloth in a controlled setting in an area with no trash service is not the same as dumping trash in a lake. And I did not get a response. I didn't think I would. Typically, I don't bother to answer those kinds of things, but I, I, that's completely self-explanatory there as far as the difference between leaving a television set at a lake versus burning wood and cloth. Here's one on the flea market and animals in tiny cages. And I just made the statement, I don't like seeing animals like this. And I don't. I don't like seeing animals penned up in tiny containers. This person had chickens and goats and all sorts of things in cages they could barely stand in, let alone move. And I know that there are people who keep animals that way all the time. It's not just because they're at market. And this guy says, all I'm going to say, I'm a, I'm a, all I'm going to say is if you eat meat, I don't want to hear shit. Well, actually I don't. But even if I do, I would like to know that the animal's not suffering their entire lives before they have to be sacrificed for a meal. Another one here on the animals in the cages, he says, uh, then pay for them to have a better education and market to sell they're in desperate need, not only the animals. You animal lovers would save a dog, but not even care about humans. Okay. Why should I 
pay for them to be educated. They know what's right and wrong already. You don't need to be educated to know the difference between right and wrong and to know whether or not you're making an animal suffer. Okay? Secondly, yeah, you know what? I probably would save a dog before I save a human because there's too many humans like you already. Another one on the animals. They couldn't let this one go. Breaks your heart. Oh, really? Obviously, you care more about animals and birds than humans. Stop eating the grass that's meant for the animals and seeds and go stuff your face. What's meant for us humans to consume? That's such a broken sentence, I don't even know what to do with it. Stop eating the grass that's meant for the animals. Eat quickly! Eat quickly! Today, no time, no time, you eat quickly. Limited time today. I, I don't eat grass. Um, obviously, you care more about animals and birds. Yeah, in some cases, I do. It depends on how awful the humans are, because humans are probably the worst animals on this planet. And again, next comment, of course, they are only contained like that while they're being sold. You have no way of knowing that. I'll point it out one more time. I have seen people that keep animals like this all year round. They barely have standing room because they have no regard for the animal whatsoever. So you have no way of knowing if this is only for the purpose of selling these animals. And another one, because there was a lot of this. It says, you're an idiot, you can buy them at Tractor Supply in a small box. Let me guess, liberal, right? Great, let me finish this with an STFU, and I'm sure you know what that means. No, I am not a liberal. I just don't like seeing animals suffering. I don't. I don't like it. I'm an idiot. Fine. I, get, I must be. And it says you can buy them at Tractor Supply in a small box. Well, you know, they're kept in an open pen with at least enough room to move around, and they put it into a small box so that you can put it in your car and take it home. But it doesn't live in that box. Couple more. This guy says you like them in KFC buckets. No, actually, I don't. I don't eat poultry and I don't eat KFC. And then this, uh, this genius says, so buy them all and let them be free instead of videotaping them for your publicity. Ever hear the word hypocrite? And if I buy them all and set them free somewhere, that vendor will just get more and do it again. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. If you see something you don't like, do you throw all of your money into it? I doubt it. This guy says, stick to prepping, not crying. I'm pretty sure I was not crying in the video. <laughs> and this guy says, they are just for sale that way. Why don't you offer to buy a couple of medium-sized pins? Why didn't you just buy all the chickens and set them free, bleeding heart? They're not beating them. They're just in there for sale. Uh, cry those little birds look healthy and clean from here. So sad they have to be inconvenient for a couple of hours. And again, you don't know how long those animals are in those cages. They could be in those cages for life. We don't know what these people do with them when they bring them back. And I'll alliterate one more time. I have seen people who keep animals that way permanently, which is what it made me think of. Why do I have to buy them to fix this? It's not going to fix it. All they're going to do is start the process again. The vendor doesn't care. I'm a bleeding heart and the animals look good from what you can see. So in a blur of a short, you know how healthy the animals are. That's fantastic. We're going to move on to an entirely different subject. Thank goodness. And there's tons more like that, but that's enough. Here's one that I did quite a while ago on public gardens or community gardens. Is the federal government really coming for your garden? The truth about the community garden project. And this person comments, you are wrong and ill-informed view redacted today. I don't know what view redacted means. I don't think you can take away your view once you watch the video, can you? You can take away your thumbs up and put a thumbs down or no thumbs up or whatever. I don't think you can remove a view whatever that means. 
I don't know why they feel like they have to tell me they're doing that. And I am wrong and ill-informed. Look it up for yourself. And I actually cited the Department of Agriculture's website in this. The Community Garden Project, which has been around for decades and has been circulating or was at the time through the prepper community as a sensationalist way to get views, if you will, which is why I did the video on it to debunk that. Prepper videos were sitting there going, oh, the government wants to register your garden. They're gonna come and take your vegetables. They're gonna steal your tomatoes. And the, again, the Community Garden Project has been around for decades, and I explained it in great detail in the video. I guess they didn't watch the whole thing or they didn't bother to research it after the fact. It's literally what it says that it is the registration of a community garden. Like if you go and you see a township has a garden that they grow vegetables for and donate to say a food pantry, that's a community garden. And they register it if they choose to, because it's not required, so that they can get federal funding to maintain that garden. And it states very clearly that if it's not a zoned community garden, they don't want to hear from you. Please don't register your private garden. Please don't do this. Please don't do that. You're going to get rejected. And across the entire country, there's only like a couple of hundred gardens registered. Because, again, it is a community project. I think it started way back during the Carter administration, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, I'm not the one ill-informed here. Um, here's one for the burying shipping containers. That's a very old video. Got a lot of views on that one. That's back when I used to get a lot of views before YouTube started pounding on my channels. He says, ah, yes, instilling fear into people that are building shelters out of fear. How am I instilling fear in people by warning them to use common sense if they're trying to build a shelter? That's not instilling fear. That's asking people to take a step back and just be sure about what they're doing because trying to bury a shipping container is a very dangerous prospect. I did a video talking about that sort of thing just recently to reiterate on the entire subject. How to get UPS and FedEx to deliver to a P.O. box. That's one I did last year. A lot of people are confused about it. I have a P.O. box and I never have a problem with UPS or Federal Express delivering a package there because there is something that you can do in order to get your package delivered to a P.O. box. It's not that they can't deliver it to a P.O. box. Or, it's, or rather, I should say it's not that they won't. It's that they technically can't because they don't have a, the proper physical address. And I explained it in detail in that video. And this guy says, did not work. UPS sent to my PO box. USPS signed to receive package. Package still missing over two weeks later. If that's true, then that's a problem with that particular post office mishandling your package. I've never had a problem with it and I've gotten communication from a bunch of people who have tried this after seeing the video successfully and have thanked me for it. Hey, wow, that worked. Thanks for the tip. So that's, a, that's an issue with your particular post office, especially if they signed for it, they took accountability for your package and mishandled it somehow, probably stuck the slip or the package in the wrong box and whoever got it stole it. which has happened to me before. I've had something put in the wrong box. I've gotten a, the wrong package and I've returned it, but I also have had a package delivered and didn't get it and it turns out it was given to the wrong person. And fortunately, when that happened, the post office was able to recover it. Here's one on EV charging stations. A lot of people got mad about this one because I said the politics of the placement of EV charging stations. Now this is a Kroger and they installed two and they removed two handicapped parking spaces to put these right in front of the front doors. It's right in front of the store and they, they don't get used because there's no one around here with an electric vehicle apparently, but they don't get used. There's never a car there. 
never, which is why I did the short. And again, I was kind of insulted because I'm like, you can't put it somewhere else. This guy says, this makes no sense putting them next to the store where the power is ridiculous and political. And they spilled ridiculous wrong. They're making fun of me because they're saying that the reason they put it up in the front of the store is because that's where the power is. Well, the power runs through the entire parking lot, which is why there are parking lamps throughout the parking lot and also a Kroger gas station on the other side. So there's an entire... Uh, there's an entire grid under that parking lot. They could have put those anywhere. Like the local Target, when they put theirs, put theirs all the way on the other side of the parking lot because all they have to do is adapt one of the street lamps into a charging station. This guy says, you're so oppressed. I'm, why am I oppressed? I'm not inconvenienced by it. The handicapped people who might want to park there are. And here we go. Here's a string of them. Bro mad, he got to walk an extra 10 feet. Um, I'm not handicapped. And actually, we park at the other side of the parking lot and walk to the store, uh, just as a personal preference. And why am I bro? It's always bro or bra now. You notice that? Bro, shut up. There we are again. My guy, you're not the main character. No one is out to get... To get you go home and relax I didn't say anyone was out to get me I just made it a point of reference that they removed two handicapped spots and put two charging stations there that don't get used and they set them up right in the front with this big sign flashing to show people that oh yeah look we got EV charging stations we're so progressive it's bullshit uh, ha ha ha, you mad bro. Slow news day, I suppose. Glad you warned us about this injustice. Uh, or copper costs money, get a life. Bro, there's that bro again. I can't stand it. <laughs> That's more annoying than anything they're saying, is that they keep calling me bro. And copper costs money. Yeah, and once again... They could have put those anywhere in the parking lot because the parking lot is, is completely grid mapped. I just don't understand why this is noteworthy like it's a parking spot. You would be upset about it if you were you had a handicap tag. And it says, yes, deciding on the placement of an EV charging spot is very political, isn't it? Hate to break it to you, but not everything is about politics. Well, it's hard to tell in the modern world, isn't it? Who has thought this? And this is just a meme that I threw up asking people if they've ever contemplated how when they've ever looked back historically at events and said, how could people fall for that? But you see it happening in real time in the modern era. And this person says the Trump cult is real. They'll believe anything their dear leader says. I wasn't talking about Donald Trump. There's your Trump derangement syndrome again rearing its ugly head whether you like Trump or not he's not connected to every process of thought he's also not the only person that you could accuse of being dishonest that's in media or politics by a long shot hell they're all lying to us are you kidding me did I find a hoarder car this was a can of worms too a lot of people got upset about this one okay and I'm going to reveal something about this short after the fact. It says, learn the difference, piece of human garbage. All I did was ask a question. I showed this car. The car is filthy and it's loaded with stuff. Okay? Just loaded, trashed out. It looks really filthy inside. Okay? And I asked a question. Hey, look at this. Did I find a hoarder car? You can't just give your opinion. You have to attack me. You have to accuse me of being uneducated, telling me to learn the difference, and then you call me a piece of human garbage. And then we have a couple of other people. This person says, nope, homeless. Okay, they believe the person's homeless. That's fair enough. Then the next person says, hoarders don't stuff their cars. That's homeless. Learn the difference. There's another one telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. You can't just say whether you think it's a hoarder's car or not. All right. Hoarders don't stuff their cars. Have you ever worked with a hoarder or had to deal with one? I have. My ex was a hoarder. Turned into a massive hoarder after we broke up. My first ex. I've talked about that. And some of you might even remember that video where I showed photos from the inside of her house from way back a few years ago. 
that's part of the reason why she lost custody of the kids was because of the condition of that home. Stuff piled to the ceiling, and guess what? Her car was loaded too. And have you ever watched hoarders? Their cars are loaded. They, that's part of the condition. They'll fill anything they can get their hands on. They'll fill the house. They'll fill the garage. They'll rent storage lockers and cram them. They'll fill the cars. They'll fill a camper. They'll fill your house. It's part of the problem. They can't stop just cramming stuff. So yes, they do stuff their cars, okay? Yes, they do. Here's the, here's the, the, the clincher, and I got a lot of hate on this one. I know whose car that is. They're not homeless. Surprise! I knew the answer, and I often do that because I just want to see how people are going to react. I admit it. It's a little social experiment of mine to see whether or not people can just answer the question. Yes, it's. A, I think it's a hoarder's car. No, I think it's a homeless person. Versus how many people are just going to spit in my face, like uh, like these couple of people did. And there's more comments like this, but that's enough. I don't know them personally, but I know whose car this is. I filmed that in the parking lot in front of their job where they work. I've seen their house. I've seen where their car parks. And the house looks about as bad as the car. This is a meme that I threw up about the massive waves of immigration that are coming into the country. Unchecked, out of control, unvetted migrants from all over the world, not just South America, coming across the northern and southern border. It's a huge concern especially with so many of them being, quote, migrants of interest, which means that they're criminals, quite frankly, that should never have been allowed in the country in the first place. And this person says, this is some retarded, quote, I tell you what, boy, this country was built by immigrants, read a history book, retards. And I did actually a whole video on this subject just recently. The migrants who originally came to this country came here to build something and to be part of something. And they broke their backs and they worked hard and they died even to be part of something that they thought was greater than the whole, to contribute something. They wanted to learn the language. They wanted to be part of society. They wanted to have a job. They wanted to participate. And it was work or die in those days. My family is immigrants. The, uh, I don't know too much about my father's side of the family, but on my mother's side of the family, my grandparents came over on the boat during the Industrial Revolution and wanted to work and build something and did. These people are not. There is a huge difference between the people pouring across the border now and the ones that poured across the border in history's past. And here's a short on the kittens. Picking on the poor kittens. What's wrong with you folks? It says, you are about a, you are about a, I guess they mean you are about to cause a huge cat infestation, brudda. And this person says, spay and neuter is more helpful than continuing to feed homeless cats. And then that person says, part of the problem. Now, you all know, I take care of a lot of stray animals and mostly I get cats. You also know I work with a lo local shelter, Halo House, and with a local vet. And I do vet these animals. I do get them spayed and neutered. I do get them inoculated. And I do rehome as many as possible. Those are just uneducated responses, if you will. They don't know anything about me, but they made assumptions. And that's unfortunate. Medication! Here's another short I did recently. Do people take too many meds? Is there a pharmaceutical industrial complex? I did a short and then I did a video following up. As many of you are aware, my mother-in-law is now permanently hospitalized. She has to stay in a nursing home because she has been permanently affected by a stroke. And she was on like 32 different medications. It's insane. And so I wanted to talk about that. And this person says, people are living longer than ever thanks to first world modern medicine. I don't know about that, Jack. I mean, this is not an aggressive comment. I'm sure they really believe that, but are you sure about that? And I've talked about this. I've used polio as an example. Polio is spread by living in squalor. That's why people who are in third world countries who even receive polio shots still get it. The real cure for polio is being clean. 
So, did modern medicine allow us to live longer, or is being cleaner, having better access to food and clean water, perhaps a contributing factor? And we have taken a huge skip and a jump from a handful of vaccinations and an occasional prescription, like when I was growing up, to what we're looking at now, where people are getting dozens of inoculations, 40, 50 shots before their 18th birthday, and God knows how many tons of prescriptions that you don't know what they do and the side effects are terrifying. We are in a pharmaceutical industrial complex now that we did not have before. And that's something to really think about, which is what the short and the video were focused on. Here's another short, Am I Wrong? And it says, mentally unfit for trial means mentally unfit to run the country. And it was a dig at President Biden because they're saying he's mentally unfit for trial now. And I'm like, okay, if you're declaring him mentally unfit, then isn't he mentally unfit for everything else, not just to stand trial? It's a legitimate question. That's why I said, am I wrong? And this guy says, Trump is so guilty for crimes, he is begging for immunity so he can have the right to commit more. I wasn't talking about Donald Trump. Here we go again. And he's begging for immunity so he can commit more crimes. So he shouldn't try to get immunity if he's on trial. If you were on trial and you had an opportunity for immunity, you would refuse it. No, not I. Do not give me immunity. I am so guilty. I just accept whatever you throw at me. Give me a break. Moving right along. This is one that I did in a pawn shop, a quick lesson in pawn shop math, what do they pay? And this guy says, I work at this pawn shop chain and it displays that the item cost is 300 nice try bro. Again with the bro. Um, they did not pay 300 for that because if you look at the scheduling of price drops, most of them are below $300. They are not going to sell it for less than they paid for it. And they're not going to sell it for just a hair over what was paid. They're not going to sell it for $399 after paying $300 for it. And they're not going to sell it as the scale goes down for $257 and then $205 and so on. Okay, that's not how a pawn shop works. Uh, nice, You're the one that's having a nice try there trying to convince anybody you actually work at a pawn shop. Anybody who's ever been to a pawn shop <laughs> knows how this works, knows what they pay. They pay an average of about between 10 to 15% on the high end, okay? 15% is about the most you can hope for in most circumstances, and that's not such a high-end item that they're willing to compromise and pay a little more, okay? Another one for the burying shipping containers. I wonder how this one got all the way back here. It must have gotten separated. Burying shipping containers. And he says, perhaps you could tell the viewer how to properly bury a container. Just a thought. Being a little snarky there, are you? Did you watch the whole video? Because I covered that. You just don't get it, do you? You don't. Yeah, I did in that video mention how you would properly bury a shipping container in a safe manner, which is about as costly as actually buying a proper shelter and having it properly installed. So if you're going to go through that much expense, you may as well do it right, which was the point of the video. I guess they didn't watch the whole thing. Social Security video I did a long time ago. Should you register your child a social security number? And this guy says it is possible to get a job, a passport, and a bank account without a social security number. Yeah, in 1920. No, I'm sorry, it isn't. Why don't you demonstrate for me how it is possible? Every time somebody talks about this, it's either the social security card video or the birth certificate video where people try to convince you that your birth certificate is a bond and that you can cash it in and get money somehow. I always tell them, explain how it's done. They never respond back. You know why? Because they can't do it. All right? And you can find information, and it's on the IRS's website, and I demonstrated the IRS's website. I showed their website when... I did the birth certificate video in particular 
warning you not to try it or they'll put you in prison. Okay? Don't even try it. It's called bond fraud. We will arrest you. You will go to prison. They're very adamant about it. Point in question here is literally, even if it is true, you're going to go to jail, jump dummy. Don't do it. Here's a meme I threw up about the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. And really, they're just talking and saying, oh, I missed the Super Bowl. And then the guy says, you didn't miss anything. You know, no harm, no foul. And this guy says, 128 million most watched Super Bowl. Even Nickelodeon did a special version that is trending online. So hashtag fake news. Did I say people didn't watch the Super Bowl? Did I say it wasn't watched? I suggested that if you didn't see it, you didn't miss anything. You didn't. Who gives a shit? I don't care about the Super Bowl. I don't know anyone who does. And I question those numbers, quite frankly. And I've talked about this before. A lot of those numbers for sporting events are padded. And as well as uh, news agencies like CNN or whatever. Because in bars and restaurants and waiting rooms... They have TVs all over the place that are running. If you have a restaurant that has an average of 6 to 10 TVs in it showing the Super Bowl, and you count how many restaurants and bars there are in the United States, how many views is that? Because they count every television. The modern systems do through the cable networks. So those numbers are all padded. But, as I said, if you missed the Super Bowl, who cares? That's all the, me that's all the meme suggested. You took it differently. Here's a video I did some time ago. It says, preppers who talk too much, you could end up in trouble. And in it, I referenced a guy that got all excited talking about his prep. Someone I barely knew who brought me into his house, showed off his gun safe, showed all of his stuff. And I'm like, dude, you know, you don't know me that well. Slow down. I'm not going to do anything to hurt the guy. And I believe I said that in the video. You know, I wouldn't hurt him or steal anything from him or whatever. But, you know, you never know who you're talking to. Just slow down. And that's kind of the premise of that video. And this guy says he did not know what a scumbag you are. I'm a scumbag. Did I steal anything from him? Did I hurt him? Did I reveal who he was or where he was to anybody? I'm a scumbag. Yeah, okay. Another short, trying to help a stray dog. It says, that is a wolf who was possibly kicked out of his pack and lives alone. And then the other person there says, that is a wolf. I had a lot of people comment on this particular short saying, it's a wolf, it's a wolf, it's a wolf. Uh, nope, it's a dog. Wolves are not two feet tall. Wolves do not come up to you when they get comfortable. Okay? <laughs> that is not a wolf. <laughs> You can look at the oversized bowl in the picture, which is like this, okay? Big dog bowl, and gauge the size of the dog with that bowl, and, you know, visualize it, I would hope. It's not a wolf, guys, all right? But whatever. A little bit of a lighthearted one there at the end, because I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. This went on long enough, don't you think? And there's more, there's more, but... That's more than enough for now. So there we go. Hey guys, what do you think? <laughs> Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section down below. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my other channel, Prepper University. Check out my other channel, Stray Cat Sanctuary. The links are down below because I've got that project going, talking about the uh, animals, the shelter cats that we take care of. Find me on X, formerly known as Twitter. Again, all that information is down there. Hope you in, enjoyed the commentary. Catch me on the live streams. We do the podcasts pretty much Monday through Friday. And if that's it, then what more can I say but stay tuned, folks, because there is more to come. <laughs>